uh, section 12.3 inferences for two population proportions. Here we're dealing with two population proportions. In the previous two sections, it was only one. This is only one. Here we're gonna compare them. We're gonna compare them. Uh, it's gonna be a similar way when we did two population means. Two population means. We had mu1 and mu2. Here we have uh, p1 and p2. So in order for that to work, so we got uh, two populations and then we we take in so you have population one population two and from this we're taking a sample of size n1 so sample one with size n1 sample two with size n2 and what are we going to do is we are going to test claims about these two populations different claims they have different ways but it's going to be the same scenario same way as before as we did in the previous sections so the sampling sampling distribution is of the difference between two sample proportions of course this is going to be for independent samples and uh, one of them does not affect the other one at all um, so these samples the first one has a size one and one the sample two has size n2 and we define mu sub p1 hat minus p2 hat to be p1 minus p2 so that means um, the mean of the difference is always the difference of the populations and we have the standard deviation so this is the standard deviation and that's the mean the standard deviation is defined as p1 times 1 minus p1 over n plus p2 times 1 minus p2 over n2 assuming this is an approximately normal distributed for large n1 and n2 so to run the testing hypotheses the samples should be simple random sampling and they should be independent sampling and x1 n1 minus x x2 n2 minus x2 both bigger than or equal to 5 and this is the null hypothesis is p1 equals p2 or sometimes you might see people saying p1 minus p2 is zero is the same thing for the null hypothesis and for alternative hypothesis it could be different for two tail tests less than for left tail tests and bigger than for right tail tests to find z sub zero that i call the test statistic value uh, we use p1 hat minus p2 hat divided by the square root of uh, p p p hat times one minus p p hat uh, times the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 uh, where p hat sub p is given like this uh, this the subscript p is the pooled uh, uh, because of the pooled uh, population so this is p0 uh, pp the reason there is a a subscript p it's because we call it the pooled sample proportion and uh, uh, to remind you um, p hat so p1 hat would be x1 over n1 p2 hat is x2 over n2 and then after that after we find z0 we can either go with the classical or critical approach or the p-value approach exactly the same way as we did before and we use the z table because we're finding the z we use table 2 or the z table to to handle this um, also, we are going to learn how to find the confidence interval for that, confidence interval, using the formula, uh, one to give us the lower bound, one to give us the upper bound. So again, we are finding confidence interval for the difference of the two populations. We're dealing with two populations, two population proportions. Uh, to look at how all this is done, it's good to look at an example so we start with the example we have in a clinical trials of nasinex so it's a it's a medication called nasinex 
So in a tri clinical trial, we have 3,774 adults with allergies. Uh, so consider them that patients 12 years or older here were randomly divided into two groups. So this were divided into two groups. Group one, this is the experimental group. And group two, the first one is the experimental group. In the, uh, the experimental, the people in the experimental group, they received 200 MCG of Nasonex, while the patients in group two, those are called the control group, received placebo. Um, it's a, it's kind of like a fake bill, does not affect, has no side effect, nothing. Of the 2,103 patients in the experimental, so there's 2,103 um, patients here in, in the first group. And, and so that will leave, if you subtract 3,774, uh, subtract 2,103 from the 3,774, that will leave about uh, 1,671 patients in the second group. So they said in the from the first group, uh, 700, 500 from this, 547 reported headaches as a side effect. Of the 1,671, 368 of them reported headaches as a side effect. Is there a significant evidence to support the claim that the pop proportion for Nasinex users? that experienced headaches as a side effect is greater than the proportion in the control group. So say, say um, this one has a proportion P1, P2. So the claim is that P1 is bigger than P2. At the level of, of uh, significance, alpha is given as 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So, we know these are two samples, they're independent, they separate the two groups into two samples and uh, we, have, we have to test the claim if P1 is bigger than P2 or not. So to test the hypotheses or to list them H0 and H1 or HA is that uh, P1 is always equal P2. The claim said that P1 is bigger than P2. We are going to test this claim. Um, and before we test the claim, we can uh, we can check if so. Here, the the numbers we have, <clears throat> the numbers we have. This is n1. This is n2. The sample size. This is x1. This is x2. Um, notice if you like to check on the side, x1. X1 is uh, 547, bigger than or equal to 5, so that's okay. X2, the same thing, 368, bigger than or equal to 5, okay. We need to check N1 minus X1. N1, 2003 minus 547. Is that bigger than or equal to 5? Yes. What about N2 minus X2? 1671 minus 368, is that bigger than or equal to 5? Yes. So all these conditions are met. All the conditions are met. The next step is to find the P hats. So P1 hat, which is X1 over N1. So X1 here is four, 547 over 2103. That gives me 0 0.26. P2 hat, it's X2 over N2. X2 is 368 over 1671 which is 0 0.22. Okay, we got these values. Now uh, we need to find P sub P hat. Uh, that one is, you add the X's over the sample sizes, there's some. So 547 plus 368 over uh, 2103 plus 1671. And that gave me 0 0.242. Then what I want to do is to find Z sub 0. Z sub 0 is P1 hat minus P2 hat. 
over so p1 hat minus p2 hat over the square root of uh, p p hat times 1 minus p p hat times the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 okay so uh, p1 hat we found it 0 0.26 p2 hat 0 0.22 divided by the square root of 0 0.242 times 1 minus 0 0.242 times 1 over n1 2103 over 1 over 1671 that gives you 0 0.04 over uh, 0 0.0140357 over 0.0140357 the more digits you you uh, include here the better and that would be about 2.85 that's z sub 0 that's z sub 0 so i got i got the value for the uh, z statistic here this is the z statistic value and now what we need to do is there are two approaches either the critical approach or critical value approach And then we're going to see the p-value approach. So for the critical value, uh, what we need to do is we need to go and use, so for alpha equals 0 0.05, we use the table 2 or the z table to find the critical value. We find the critical value. Uh, in this case, uh, looking at the table for z sub 0 0.05, I find it's um, 1.645, 1.645. Okay, so now we can draw the figure here to show you. This is um, 1.645. This is the critical region, critical region. And what we have here, we need the uh, Z sub zero, the test statistics fall somewhere here. So notice the test statistic falls in the, in the, in the critical or rejection region. So we reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis means there is sufficient evidence at the level of 0 0.05 level of significance to support the claim that the proportion of individuals that are 12 years or older taking uh, the medication who experience headaches is greater than the proportion of individuals um, of 12 years and older taking placebo who experiencing headaches. So this means we support the claim uh, H1 or HA, the alternative hypothesis. That is for, um, this is how we find using the critical value approach, the p-value approach, the p-value approach. Keep in mind, this is a right tail test because it's bigger than right tail test. The p-value always is the probability, is the area under the standard normal curve to the right. So the p-value is the probability or the area uh, to the right of the z bigger than z0. So that means is the probability that z bigger than 2.85. 2.85. So now we need to look in table 2 again. So as I'm doing right now, we're going to look at table 2. We find out first thing that the table gives only to the left. So what we have to do is we do 1 minus the probability z less than 2.85. Now we are going to the z table as we did before and look at the 2.8 here and 0 0.05. 
and let's see what we get if you draw a horizontal column a vertical column horizontal row this value here that I see is 0 0.9978 so it's going to be 0 0.9978 and if we subtract them together that gives 0 0.0022 so we're going to compare the p-value with alpha notice that the p-value is less than alpha the given alpha 0 0.05 so that tells us to reject the null hypothesis. Always, if the p-value less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. This is how we test the claim. The, and, and this claim is uh, was about the uh, right tail test. The same thing works for the left tail test. The only thing, you don't have to do this, extra, this step here. Everything else the same. Um, for the next part is how to find how to find the um, confidence interval. We're gonna apply it to the same example. So for the, we start with the lower bound, lower bound. So the lower bound of the interval is P1 hat minus P2 hat minus Z sub alpha over two times P1 hat times one minus P1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat over n2 as soon as you find the lower bound you will have less work to do for the upper bound okay upper bound is the same thing just instead of minus there's a plus and so let's say they asking us to construct construct 90 percent confidence interval for the difference between the two uh, population proportions, P1 minus P2. Um, we already have, uh, let's see, we can pick uh, another example. Uh, so let's say we have the same thing in clinical trials of uh, same medication. We have 750 people randomly selected and we're randomly divided into two groups. The first group uh, received 100 mcg of the medication while the other group received placebo of the 374 patients in the experimental group so this was split into two groups again 374 here 64 of them they reported they have um, headaches as a side effect and the other group is 376 68 of them reported uh, they have a headache as side effect and we we need to construct the 90 percent confidence interval for the difference between the two population proportions p1 minus p2 so this is again n1 this is n n2 this is x1 this is x2 so here you can run the testing for uh, for the x1 n1 minus x1 and so on and so forth make sure they're all bigger than or equal to five so we, this is normal distributed and what we need to find is p1 hat x1 over n1 which is 64 over 374 that gives me 0 0.171 p2 hat is x2 over n2 x2 is 68 over 376 0 0.181 so since 90% confidence interval, uh, that means alpha is 1 minus the 90% means it's 0 0.10. And if you look in the Z sub alpha over 2, because we need this, it's Z of 0 0.10 over 2, Z of 0 0.05, we just found it earlier, 1.645. Okay, now we're going to write the formula down p1 hat minus p2 hat for the lower bound minus z sub alpha over 2 times the square root of p1 hat 1 minus p1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat over n2 what what does that give us 0 0.171 minus 0 0.181 minus the z is 1.645 the square root of 0 
1 minus 0 0.171 all over 374 plus 0 0.181 1 minus 0 0.181 all over 376 so what do we get for this this is negative 0 0.010 and for the other one 0 0.046 so first you do this one and then this one then add them together and then the, the whole sum you take the square root of that and times it by this it gives me this one so this will be negative 0 0.056 for the upper bound is the same formula just a plus so this means you're gonna get the same number as this one on this side and same number on that side with a plus in the middle so that gives us 0 0.036 so then the confidence interval goes from negative 0 0.056 to 0 0.036 So this means to interpret this based on the results of the study, we find out that 90, we are 90% confident that the difference between the population or the proportion of headaches in the experimental group and the control group is between this number here, negative 0.056 and the other number, 0.036. So um, that's, that's what the confidence interval is and that's how we interpret it. So same thing works if it's a, a left tail test, right tail test, uh, or two tail test. It's, it's the same same method, same way.